So here's quickly how you create two different types of deformers. Uh, the first being the spline tool uh, deformer and the next one being all the way around the perimeter deformer. Uh, okay, so first thing you want to make sure you have is the deformation tools right up here. If you don't have them shown, then right click anywhere on this top tab and in the drop down menu right at the bottom. So first things first, uh, select your drawing and turn on both of these two hammers the rigging tool and setup mode tool and your first point that you're gonna click is the offset so we're gonna put it a little bit off to the side here because it's a fixed point and the artwork will all rotate around that and if you move it all the other deformer points move too so uh, we'll put it over here just to kinda of keep it out of the way since we won't really be using it much uh, so the first point after the offset we click will be the first animatable uh, point and we're going to click and drag it then release and that uh, creates the handles if I didn't click and drag and release I just clicked then it would it wouldn't give me the handles it would just give me essentially a bone which uh, I can still move that point around but it would rigidly be moving it around like uh, I suppose if you're doing spider legs or something where you didn't really want any S or C curve action then you'd use that but in this case we won't be creating a bone. So after this first point's uh, been clicked and dragged, it realizes we're using the handles. So from now on, we can just click regularly and it'll continue on that path. And I can just keep making as many points as I want, but I'm only going to be making two at this point. So we've got our two points applied, but now we have to make the handles usable for animation. So we're going to click on the transform tool and You'll notice they tend to go inside out, which is not very useful, so we're going to put it right back around and space it out evenly. Oops. And we don't want these handles to be overlapping with each other, and we don't want them too short. We want them to be kind of as central and spaced out as possible. Uh, the more symmetrical it is, the better it will work, you know, the more you'll get out of it. So that's kind of in place here. Now, I put these points on the outside, but you can put them on the inside. It's all up to you. It's trial and error. Okay. So we're going to lock this in place now. When we turn off the hammer, the setup mode, you'll notice that it explodes and kind of, if you'll notice, if you remember, this is what the deformer looked like when we first made it, with the handles all squished and inside out and stuff. And this is how the artwork would look if that deformer affected it. But what we want the deformer and artwork to be like is a proper rectangle with the nice clean handles we created. So to get that, we're going to select the deformer and hit this button here, copy resting position to current. This is also the same button you use to reset any animation done on a deformer. And there you have it. Standard rectangle, S and C curve, capable. This would be great for rubber hose, vines, any of those sort of things where you don't require the adjustment of width other than as a whole. But if you do require the adjust adjustment of width other than as a whole, then the other deformer you want to use is the perimeter deformer. So I'm just going to blow this one away and let's start fresh. Selecting the drawing, we're then going to turn on the two hammer tools. And the first point I put down is the offset. So it starts very similar to the spline. Next point will be a little bit past center on this side. Click and drag. And now we're going to proceed around the perimeter. Now I'm just going to create ones on the four corners to make it easier. You can put another one in the center. But I would not do any more than that unless you're trying to do something really crazy because they can get entangled pretty pretty quickly. So first point, now it knows I'm doing handles. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, so let's get those handles sorted out. Transform tool. Smooth everything around. I'll zoom in here for you. So you'll see that uh, 
I can't, it's, it's kind of hard to conform this handle to that sharp line. Uh, so if you actually hold down Alt, you can manipulate these handles independently of each other. And it doesn't matter if you want to put this right through the center, if you want to put it over here. Uh, as long as it's close, it's still going to affect the line. It's just that depending on what you want to do, it'll work better. If you're doing a sleeve, such as this, and you want to be able to get a nice S C curve out of the sleeve, then you'd want to put it right through the center of the deformer or of the drawing. Uh, but if you're for an arm, sometimes it's actually better to put it close to the outside like this because you have the ability to squish these in together and just use it just a bit further away because the closer these two points get to each other, the more likely this fill is going to go and uh, extrude in places you do not want it to extrude. So let's continue on making these nice and smooth. Holding Alt, I'll adjust that handle separately. Making them as symmetrical as possible. In this case, I'll put them on the outside of the uh, drawing. Get that handle out of the way because we don't don't really want to use that. The purpose of these two being together is because because we have to have an offset. Um, these two allow me to adjust this line. If I just put one of them, then it would kind of pull half of the line and it would be a bit messy. So I think you get the idea at this point. Let's finish it up for demonstration purposes. Okay, so if we're done with the deformer, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, just you just want to make sure it's not overlapping, especially when you get into these little close knit little handles. All right, so we're going to copy the resting position to current so that this is what our animatable deformer looks like. So when we turn off this hammer, yuck, you want it to look awesome, not, not awesome. So click on the drawing or the deformer and copy resting position to current. And you are ready to animate. If you test it and it falls apart, because something was messed up, then uh, it's pretty quick to just delete a deformer and try again. Now, if this is on an existing arm and you've created a new cell, you won't you don't want to blow away the entire deformer because then you're going to lose the deformers for all your cells. Um, you'll notice within this deformer, there is a another group that says one. This is linked to the drawing here, which is cell number one. If I duplicate this drawing, there won't be a deformer on it on the neck on the new drawing because it'll be called drawing number two. If you want a def deformer on that second drawing, there's two things you can do. The first, you can go into this deformer, copy and paste special. the number one deformer, creating new columns, linking to original, all that sort of stuff. The columns is really the important thing in this case. And OK. And you're going to rename this 2, or whatever your new drawing is. It could be 35, it doesn't matter. Connect that up here, connect it down here, and you will have a def the same deformer in fact, it'll have the same information already set on it on cell number two. If you want to duplicate a drawing and say say I'm animating away, I'm like, oh, you know what, this, this line is way too thin. I wish I'd, I had the same drawing, but just, I wish I had the same drawing, but just a bit thicker. Um, or longer or something, but I want to use the same deformer and I don't want to have to reanimate it. Well, what you can do is you can duplicate this. Um, 
I'll do it in the exposure sheet just so, so you can visualize it a bit better. Um, down here, X sheet. So here is our drawing, frame number one. <clears throat> I'm going to right click, drawing, duplicate drawing. And there, now we have number two, one and two. One has a deformer, two does not, because there is only a deformer with the number one in our deformer group. So I'm going to copy, paste special. Name this number two. Hook them up, just like number one, and you'll see the deformer popped in. And because I pasted special, this deformer is totally unique from cell number frame number one's deformer. Woo! But if you want the deformer to be the same, you simply rename your new drawing to be Oops. Rename your new drawing to be 1 plus 2. So this is the deformer we're using, and then this is the name of the cell that we want that same first deformer to be affecting as well. So you'll notice that when I go to frame 1 and move something on the deformer, and on frame 2, it's still there, or cell two rather. And this one's no longer being used because there is no longer a cell number two. So you can do this as many times as you want. And that is how you create a deformer.